Hello and welcome to this video tutorial which will guide you through the process of downloading data from the Eclipse Diagnostic Storage Unit, the DSU, and uploading that data to flightdata.com. Before we begin, a few notes we'd like to make. First is if you will be doing a full download of the data contained within the DSU, such as during the first download, this can take some time, so you might want to consider using a ground power unit for the aircraft. If you are only performing a partial download, then a ground power unit is most likely not necessary. Second, make sure you are using a compatible USB memory stick to complete the download. Not all memory sticks are compatible with the system. Contact our offices for more details on which memory sticks are recommended. Ideally, you'll want to use one that has at least 2 gigabytes of memory and includes an indicator light so you can determine if data is being written to the drive. Finally, Make sure to delete any information from the memory stick in order to prevent any issues caused by old files. The one exception to this is if you want to use a cookie file to invoke a partial download of the data. We'll talk more about using cookie files later in the video, but for now, plan on using either a completely blank memory stick or one that only contains a cookie file. Moving on, we'll look at the cockpit of the Eclipse aircraft. On each side of the cockpit, there is an armrest and beneath each is a USB port that is connected to the avionics system. It's important to note that the USB port on the pilot side of the aircraft is not connected to the aircraft's DSU. The pilot side port is used to upload data into the airplane, so we won't be using it today. Instead, we will want to turn our attention to the co-pilot side of the airplane and use the USB port located there to download data out of the airplane. To get started, we'll first want to power up the avionics by turning on both batteries. Again, if you are completing a full download, you may consider using a ground power unit in order to avoid draining the batteries. Once the power has been turned on, open the co-pilot side armrest to reveal the USB port below. This is where you will place the memory stick to collect DSU data. Insert the memory stick into the USB port and look at the indicator light to make sure data is being written. The indicator light should start to blink within about 5 seconds of inserting the memory stick. One thing to note, if the system is not ready to complete a download, the indicator light will stop blinking within about 10 seconds. If this happens, simply remove the memory stick from the port and then plug it back in. This should restart the download and will start the indicator light blinking with a rapid series of flashes, which will continue until all data has been downloaded. When the download is finished, Remove the memory stick from the USB port and turn off the aircraft batteries. We are now ready to transfer the data to a computer and upload it to flightdata.com. To do this, plug the memory stick into a computer and open the file system to reveal the files on the drive. You can double check that everything has been downloaded by opening a small text file called downloadreport.txt. If you open this file, you should see a line within it which reads Finished to download FH, which stands for Flight History, followed by some additional information. If you don't see the sentence, you may want to try to complete the download again. The next thing you'll need to do is prepare the data for upload by compressing it into a zip file. The only file that actually needs to be uploaded is the Flight History file. However, FlightData.com is set up to discard any extra files that may be included. So it's not critical that you only zip the correct file. You can zip all the contents on the memory stick or just the flight data file, so don't worry about getting it exactly right. To compress the file, right-click on the file or the folder that contains the file to bring up a menu of options. If you're using a Macintosh computer, simply select the Compress option. And if you're using a Windows-based computer, you'll want to select Send To and then Compressed. This will then compress the data into a zip file and it's the zip file that you'll want to upload to flightdata.com. Now earlier in the video we mentioned something about a cookie file. A cookie file is a tool that can be used to save time by telling the aircraft to only download recent data out of the DSU rather than downloading all of the data out of the DSU. Essentially the cookie file will tell the aircraft's computer where the last download left off and so it will only request new data during the next download. This can drastically reduce the time required to complete future downloads, and it will reduce the size of the resulting files that are downloaded, making those files easier to upload to flight data. Cookie files are automatically generated every time you upload DSU files to flightdata.com, 
and they will be emailed to you when the upload process has finished. To use this file, simply place it onto the USB memory stick before your next download out of the DSU. Be sure not to change the name of the file, and be sure that no other files are present on the USB stick when you connect it to the aircraft. Thanks for watching. If you have any additional questions, please contact our offices at any time for more information.